Good morning, David. I hope you're doing well this morning. And thank you so much for joining me for this virtual hallway chat. We used to bump into each other in hallways, so we can kind of pretend it was one of those mornings where we were running in and out of University Hall, where uh, we used to meet most often. Uh, I'm wondering if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself and talk about maybe your tenure here at McMaster so far. So first of all, Gaylene, it's, it's a pleasure uh, to be having a conversation with you again. And I too look forward to those days when we uh, bump into each other in, in the corridor. Uh, I'm David Farrar. I'm a faculty member in uh, chemistry and chemical biology, and I have the privilege to serve as McMaster's president. Um, I've been at Mac for um, going on four years now. I uh, came to Mac uh, to be Mac's provost, which is a, a job that I actually quite like. I think it's the best job in the university, although many people seem to dis disagree with that. Um, I had been um, provost at, uh, at UBC for um, the better part of a decade uh, before I came to Mac and had, uh, had finished up as provost, was, uh, was advisor to the president and acting president at, um, at UBC for a while and, uh, and then was on academic leave uh, when the opportunity uh, to come to Mac uh, was, uh, was uh, discussed. Um, I, I knew a lot about Mac. I'd spent um, three decades pretty much at the University of Toronto as a faculty member in the chemistry department and, and um, chaired that department and had some leadership roles in the provost's office at U of T before going to UBC. Uh, so I knew a lot about Mac. When I was in graduate school, uh, one of my uh, very close friends in the same research group that I was in was a Mac grad, and he knew a lot of chemistry, and he's gone on um, to do really great things, and is a university professor at the University of Toronto now. So, um, so I knew a lot about Mac just from uh, people I talked to, but hadn't really spent much time here. So when I was asked to consider the role, I came and talked to Patrick Dean, talked to a bunch of people, became very excited about Mac and about Mac's um, future, but also its past and, uh, and how it had gotten to, um, to this point. I'm so interviewed for the job and ended up as provost and thought that's how I would spend uh, the rest of my academic career. Uh, and then the president's job came up and uh, two years ago, I started as, um, as acting president or interim president technically, um, and then, then became president. Yeah, and you and I, so I know how long you've been here because I started in August and I think, was it October that you started, David, or was it November? I can't remember now. Do you remember? Uh, so uh, it's been blazing what, on my mind, my start date. I can't remember what your start date is off the top, but we were close, really close. Uh, it's true. When you, when you hire a provost, uh, the Senate Committee on Appointments has to approve it, which doesn't happen over the summer. And so uh, it needed to be approved by the Senate Committee on Appointments and then by Senate. Um, which happened in September. And so while I was actually starting to do things related to Mac over the summer, I didn't officially join until the 1st of October. Okay. And, uh, and that's when, uh, when you and I started talking. And at that point in time, uh, the response or the IT review had been completed. And the response to the IT review was to really bring us into the 21st century <laughs> when it comes to technology, exactly. um, which, which you've done. And so I'll start by um, congratulating you oh, on, a, on a very successful um, four years. We're a lot further ahead with our technology. And given what we've lived through for the last almost year and a half, uh, we have really needed the technology to get <laughs> us to you. this point. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And that was uh, such a great pleasure because I, I was reporting to you when you were provost. And uh, obviously, I still get the, the great pleasure of seeing you now as president. You continue to come to our IT executive meetings, which I love because I think it's great that uh, you both know what's going on, but also can weigh in on some of the conversations that we have around that table in our IT governance model. So that's been really great. But, you know, it's really funny you talk about that 21st century. So I quoted you in our uh, IT strategic plan because I remember you and I having that conversation you saying you know we really need to be a 21st century institution and it's a great story to be able to say yeah you know this is what our president wants and here we go let's let's dig in and do some good things and move some things forward but I have to say to you David as the CTO 
as we're going through all of this stuff and so reliant on technology, my God, I wish we'd done things faster. You know, for me, I'm thinking there were some things we didn't get done that would have been really helpful this year as well. I, it, there's always uh, that feeling, Gaylene, and, and I have it as well. You, you want to go um, faster and farther, but, um, but you work within uh, the boundaries that are around. And when I came to Mac and started wandering around talking to people, I uh, wandered into the library and there were places in the library where you couldn't connect to the internet. There was not Wi-Fi connectivity in places in the library and other universities uh, in Canada have uh, have been um, have, have had full campus coverage for two decades, um, and so uh, there was work to be done. And you, <laughs> you've really moved us forward. Um, it took it took budget to do that. I mean, the, to to do the kinds of things that you've done um, cost a lot of money, and uh, so that that was another part of it. We had to get the trust of the university. Uh, to actually agree to allow us to spend the kind of money that it takes um, to build the infrastructure. But without that infrastructure, we um, could not have gone from a residential university to a virtual university in five days, um, 15 months ago. Isn't it amazing? I know it's really, you know, we'll look back at this whole time years from now and just think, wow, that was uh, that was really different. And everybody's story will be a little bit different as well. One of the interesting things I know, um, you know, I'm sitting here in my house in Guelph, you know, this is where I live. I know where you're sitting uh, as you speak right now, you're not right on campus, but you may as well be right on campus, even though you're in your own home or the president's home residence. Um, so how has that been? Because you've you know, you've seen such a change in just population on campus. Uh, do, you, do you look out the window wistfully across the road there to the campus sometimes, David? Uh, not sometimes, all the time. <laughs> uh, I look out uh, wistfully and, uh, and, you know, wish there were more students wandering around the campus. Uh, it's getting better. There are more um, cars in the parking lot. That's a different story. That's yeah. the whole sustainability story that I could yeah. get into. Uh, but but there are more people walking around the campus too. Uh, it, Fifteen months ago, it was uh, empty, mm. and it was it was it was very strange um, very. to look over. Yeah. When I when I moved into this role as um, as interim president, it wasn't at all clear where things were going. And um, Susan and I had uh, had been living um, on, on Bay Street um, down close to Bayfront Park and the place we were living in got sold and so had to move and uh, the university had acquired these properties. Um, so I said to the university, you're using the first floor of, of this house um, to entertain and you're using the top two floors uh, to rent out to people, um, rent it out to me. Um, well, I'm interim president uh, because I, you know, I, I'll be able to be more effective in that role. Uh, and then we'll see what happens. And so you're right, I moved in across the um, street and uh, look over at the university and I'm on the uh, top floor now, which has the blurred background because it's, it's dim and uh, not a brightly lit space, uh, but it's in, been incredibly um, functional. And it's it allowed me to really get to know the university, to wander around it, to talk to the people um, who look after this house, who are part of facilities, uh, it's been a, it's actually been a great experience. I think it's really great. And I'm very fortunate I've been in that home. And it is quite lovely, actually. They did a, a really nice job of um, finishing it and, and decorating it on the first floor. And you can tell Susan that I still have dreams about some of her Christmas cookies because it was a Christmas party <laughs> that I was up there. So let her know. And I have to, you know, one of the things that's really funny, David, this is a bit of a side conversation, but so I, when I was hired, I was hired by David Wilkinson and Roger Coldry, of course, but David was my provost. Then you joined as my provost. And then there was an interim provost named Susan. And now I have a provost named Susan. Your wife's name is Susan. And there's a name thing going on here. So. There, there really is a name thing going on uh, here, and uh, I'm very much aware of it. Um, we, um, we like to entertain, and the house is really set up for that. And there's a part of the president's role um, that's um, dealing with um, pe important people who come to campus, um, meeting with donors, um, doing all of those things. And so we've had some delightful 
um, social events uh, here, uh, some great, uh, great dinners with donors. And uh, I, I do like uh, to have people over to celebrate the end of a calendar year. And so uh, a party uh, as we move into um, that break uh, in December is, is something that, uh, that's always been fun and uh, something I've really missed. It was fun to do it that first year. And a lot of these things have been taken away from us. Yeah, they really have. I miss that as well. And I'm curious for you then with the, um, you know, things are starting to shift in a nice direction right now. I just was on a call earlier where we're all really focused on the back to Mac thing. I'm curious for you, uh, is there something that you've not been able to do? And I know there's probably a million things in terms of travel and all of those, but is there one particular thing that um, you're really looking forward to being sort of normal again so that you can do that thing? I don't know if there's even one thing, but what, what comes to mind when I ask that question? I'm curious. Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is actually seeing my family. So I've uh... Uh, a daughter who lives uh, um, east of here, just uh, the other side of Oshawa. Uh, and I have a six-year-old grandson. And I've been able to see them a few times, walk outside, do those kinds of things, uh, but, not, uh, but not really spend any kind of quality time with them at all. Uh, the same, um, same with my son who lives in Sarnia. We haven't been together for a long time. Um, Susan's daughters are in the States and we haven't been able to cross the border. So, um, so we haven't seen them. There's been a, there's been a marriage, there's been a birth, um, there's been some death um, and none of it has, uh, has been able to be dealt with um, in person. And, and that's the part I really yeah, good for you. I agree with that. I think that's really so challenging. As I said, there'll be so many interesting stories as we look back at this time and everybody's experience will be so different, but there'll be some connections around that whole sense of time passed and that loss of connectivity with the people that we care about the most for sure, for sure. So we know one of the things that people do an awful lot of right now is walking. You know, there was a, a really funny um, joke where somebody was saying to their kids, I've got some really exciting for us to do this weekend and they're like not another long walk you know but you're you're next to our campus which is really quite beautiful in the ravine and and um some of the wonderful spaces that mcmaster uh is known for but also hamilton is known for so are you a walker david or are you a cyclist or a runner what is the thing that gets you outside and running through nature or walking um, well, it, it used to be running. Um, I used to run a lot, uh, but I've but the last I think just like everybody, the last um, a year and a half on Zoom, it's a Zoom is a very stressful environment. And uh, when you log on, um, sometimes before eight in the morning, and then log off after eight at night, and you go from meeting to meeting, uh, you're sitting in one place. You're just not uh, not getting the um, the exercise that you should. And so like a lot of people, my body has seized up. Uh, so I've got, you know, a, a sore hip, I've got sore shoulders, uh, which means I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, stretching and yoga and those kinds of things, but not as much walking or running as I would have hoped to. I still walk a little bit around campus, Susan, I try and get out and and wander around and we um, we wander around. We have a, a place outside of Niagara on the lake, which was um, where I thought I was going to retire. Uh, <laughs> and then Matt came along. Um, and uh, and so we do a lot of walking around there. We've, we've done some canoeing, we've done some cycling. Uh, we bought a Peloton just like everybody else did. <laughs> I did too, I did too. And that brings different injuries, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it does bring different injuries. And I, I think that the strain in some of the muscles in my hip may be related to the competitive nature of overdoing the Peloton in the early days. Yeah, that's so funny. I know. I love that. And I did uh, did as well. But yeah, I, I actually, it has been for me anyway, just having something inside. As much as I want to get outside, it is true. You can hop on that thing for 15 minutes and it can still be a really major workout when you're trying to squeeze a little bit of time. I know uh, you had, I was going to ask you about your place uh, outside of Niagara on the Lake because I remember you talking about that when we first met and I'm curious because it sounded like at the time there was a little bit of gardening I'm saying that somewhat facetiously because I think it was more than a little bit so have you been down there you know digging into the dirt and all of that because that's quite cathartic as well for being outside and and getting your mind off things 
It's more cutting the grass. There's about 0.6 of an acre of lawn. And oh, wow. so, um, but it is cathartic. It is uh, terrific to just get out and, you know, cut the grass and do those kinds of things. Because when you finish them, um, you look back and you think, huh, I've spent the last three hours and this is what I've done. And there are lots of times, uh, when, as I've said before, when you're on Zoom and you jump to your, you know, 10th meeting of the day and you wonder, you know, what have I done? Yeah, um, no kidding. I think that is so true. I, the technology is such a, it's, it really truly is quite a, a gift because it has allowed us to have this opportunity to still stay connected. Uh, it's a burden as well. Um, it's always there. It's always on potentially and available. And I, I don't know. So do you find that you've been able to put some rules around things? I know it must be awfully hard for you because of the demand on your time, but do you say like, I will not take a meeting before this time or this time is absolutely off, you know, at the end of the day, I'm finished. Or do you even get to have that kind of agency? So, in your life? So I've thought about, I've thought about that. Um, and it's my, uh, my summer activity. Uh, I, I hope to reflect a little bit on the summer. Um, about what a blended working environment is going to look like next year, next mm-hmm. academic year, and and try and put some some rules around it. Um, technology is incredibly powerful, and I, I really recognize that. Maybe the the best example of that for me was uh, when we made the decision uh, to close the campus on Friday, the thirteenth of March. Um, it was the crisis group that was brought together. Uh, but the crisis group was expanded. It's a rather small group, but it was expanded to bring the other uh, VPs in, to bring a lot of AVPs in, to bring the deans in, so that we could have a a, a complex conversation about uh, about the um, coronavirus and about what we were facing, and and have um, experts around to help us. And about half the people were jammed into a little room uh, in the student center, and the other half were on uh, the phone. Uh, and it was a really lousy um, audio call and there, a lot of people were breaking up and it was hard to hear and it was it was really quite chaotic. And I remember after about 40 minutes just looking out at the group and saying shut it down. And we made the decision at that point to, um, to go virtual and to, um, to uh, socially distance, distance and get off campus um, to the extent um, possible. And then we very quickly started to use this technology. And within a month, I realized that that same group would get together every Monday morning. Um, and, and everybody who needed to be in the room was there. So if you needed to know something about residences or something about conference services or a, or a budget or a finance question or a space question, there was somebody around who could answer that question. And there were decision makers around who could actually um, decide what we were going to do. And it was two or three pages of, of Zoom pages, so the Hollywood Squares. But the decisions that you made were really informed decisions. You could make them very quickly because there was no checking with people. The person who needed uh, who you needed input from was there. And, um, and, and everybody else was there too. So there was no broken telephone. Um, you didn't have to worry about the, the, um, the, the decision being passed down from person to person. Everybody was there. They, knew, they know the question that precipitated it. They know the discussion that resulted in it. Yeah. And so the, the technology is incredibly powerful. Yeah. And um, we're also in a situation where our students use um, the lecture capture piece. Uh, We are, uh, I think, further ahead of any university in the world with the extent to which we have lecture capture. So Echo 360 is pretty much everywhere. And I don't think any any other university is at that point. So we're in a position where we can have blended classrooms. We have some students here, some students um, virtual. We can do lecture capture. Students can use the things they liked about this technology, which is um, running it running it again later, um, picking up the nuances in some of the uh, answers that were given or some of the questions that were asked. And so um, the technology is incredibly powerful. And, uh, and we're at a point now where I think we're going to be able to use all we've learned in the last um, 15 or 16 months. Yeah, that's 
incredible, isn't it? Um, just in a short period of time, what a change in our mindset around the use of technology. I can tell you from a CIO perspective, it definitely is one of the things we've talked about, the whole idea of digital transformation on steroids. The pandemic really pushed us out of a long decision-making process into a do it, do it, do it. And people were like, yes, yes, yes. And away we go. I mean, it's still uncomfortable for many people, um, I know. So David, they, um, I know lots of people uh, probably would have a zillion questions they'd want to ask you and I'm uh, you know I think for me it's always about how you as an individual you know feel about things or what you're doing I'm, I'm always I'm curious about people more than I am about the technology or the work that you do or anything but I do wonder one question that's been on my mind and this is kind of a weird question but you talked a little bit about your start out in chemistry and a colleague that you have, and you've traveled all of you, you know, I'm sure you're still in touch. He's just at UT, you've probably been, but could you have ever imagined becoming the president of an institution? And I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm asking this with a little bit of a sub ask because a lot of us never really know what our longer term outcomes will be. You know, we're on a journey and things happen and, and what have you, but did you ever, ever think that you'd go into the administrative side of institutions, uh, academic institutions? I said, no. Um, and there's, there's so many layers um, to the question you've just asked. And so I worked very happily um, in the chemistry department at the University of Toronto for um, the better part of two decades. Um, and after about um, 12 or 13 years, I've been lecturing first year chemistry. And um, I didn't like the course. I thought that it had become stale and awful and it was the wrong approach and I wanted to change it. Um, but if you change first year chemistry, and I've told this story many times, um, you have an impact on all the other first year programs that are offered, first year biology, first year physics, and they all uh, have some component of first year chemistry in them. So I actually became associate chair undergraduate in that department, um, not because I wanted to be an administrator, but uh, if you want to change a course um, like first year chemistry, you need to convince the entire department and then you need to convince um, the rest of the university or at least all those programs that are impacted by it. And so that's what actually got me into the role. I then stumbled into being chair of that department um, just by uh, happenstance, but it's at a really interesting time because they built a new building and uh, uh, they were growing and there was a lot of transformation. It was all quite exciting. And that's what got me into administration. Um, I moved into the provost uh, office at the University of Toronto as one of four vice provosts, which was a fun time. My colleagues were incredible and there were amazing things that were happening. And then the opportunity uh, to go to UBC came up and that for me was more about a person. Um, Stephen Toop, who is now the vice chancellor or the president of Cambridge University, um, had just become president of UBC. And when I talked to him, I thought this is a person I really want to work with. And I, I had become quite interested having worked in the provost's office in the provost's job because it's a it's an interesting job. All the people um, who who, uh, who really make a difference in the university, including the CIO, um, report up to you. And so it's a it's just such an interesting um, opportunity. And uh, and then when we moved back to um, Ontario. And, uh, and Mac, such a great university, was looking for a provost. I, I really, everybody had said, if you're going to uh, work at a university in administration, uh, Mac is the university you want to work at oh, nice. uh, beca because of the collegial nature. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I came here um, to be the provost and really no intention of, uh, of moving into the president's role. And that happened when um, Patrick made the decision to retire, so, or not retire, to move, right, to move on to Queens. Yeah, it's an interesting journey. And I'm sure there's been some good laughs with friends about, you know, look at us now, you know, we all have that sort of look back moment. So listen, I know your time is precious and we're at the end of it. I have one really quick question for you and then I'm going to let you go, David. And my quick question is, when you can hop on a plane, I know you've talked about seeing family, of course, and that would be hugely important to go into the US and see Susan's um, family, children, uh, and others. Uh, but for a fun trip, you're on a plane, where are you going? 
Um, so it would be Europe. Um, first of all, we will um, probably first thing um, go to the U.S., but that'll be a road trip. Uh, and, you know, I'm a, a, a product of the 60s. And so, you know, to, the car and go, to, yeah. to go for a road trip is uh, is the ultimate. Yeah. Um, so the, the road trip will come first. Um, I have a I have a very um, qu quirky research colleague um, who lives in Rome, mm -hmm. and uh, we have um, very deep relationships with La Sapienza University in Rome, oh. and um, and so I suspect the first place I'd like to go um, would be Rome. Um, the first place I'll probably end up going is um, Vancouver because another part of that research collaboration um, is in Vancouver, and there's a meeting in Vancouver in um, October. Okay. So I didn't think I'd be on a plane at all um, this coming year, uh, the academic year, but it looks like I'll fly to Vancouver in October, which will be fun. Having lived there for a decade, it's always yeah. nice to go back. And, uh, and then the, you know, the fun trips will be um, the big cities in Europe, which, um, which I love. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Well, I do uh, obviously wish you a wonderful summer. You've earned it. You deserve it. <laughs> Hopefully it's not just mowing lawns down a, outside of Niagara on the lake, then there'll be some more fun things that you'll be able to do as well. Um, but you need time off. Everybody needs to take a break. We all know that, but I'm sure that you'll be ready to rest your brain for sure, David. Uh, so. Yeah, we, we, we um, got the roof racks for the car we have, so we're ready to put the canoe on and... <laughs> oh. and uh, paddle some of the rivers in southwestern Ontario uh, for uh, uh, for a while. That sounds perfect. Thank you so much for your time today, David. You're always a pleasure to talk to and uh, I miss seeing you in person, but I really am very fortunate that I do get to bump into you in, in meetings with, you know, 38 people and sometimes less than that as well, which is great. So thanks so much for all of your support as well. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks very much, Gaylene, and thanks for um, for all you do. I enjoy the uh, the IT exec meetings. It's nice to stay in touch and see where uh, where things are going in in the uh, IT portfolio.